Hi there, my name is Rocco. Thank you for dropping by. If this is the first time that you've paid me a visit, then welcome. I hope you like what you see and choose to hang around. If you've been before, then a big thank you again for your continued support and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be continue looking at our light and options in DAS 3D. Specifically today we're going to be taking a look at point lights. Uh, the options that we have available to us when working with point lights, when and where to use them and how to get the most out of them in your DAS 3D scenes. As usual, as you can see, we've got a model already loaded into our scene with some hair stuck onto her head and she's all dressed, ready for action. Maybe going for a little bit of a rock chick look today. Uh, and as usual, of course, you can find all the links to all the assets down below in the description. Uh, now, before we get going, once more, a big shout out to everybody who subscribed over the last few months. I really do appreciate every single one of you. If you haven't subscribed yet, then go on. Now's a good time, eh? You don't really want to be missing out on any future videos that I'm going to be doing it within Daz 3 d So all you need to do is just hit the subscribe button down below and the little notification bell, and you won't miss a thing the next time I drop a video. So then with the preliminaries done, let's have a look at point lights, should we? Just so we know, uh, if I come across to the render settings here and just take a note of the environment node that we are in scene only. So there's no other lighting coming in other than the point lights that we're going to be placing in this scene. And we can check that if we just come up to NVIDIA iRay. And all we have is blackness because there are no lights in the scene. We just come out of there now. And um, what we're going to do then, we're going to be adding a point light into the scene. And the way that we do that is we come up to the create menu. Uh, we come down to new point light. Now you've got new point light and you've got new linear point light. In reality, there's there's no difference between the two. Uh, if you are still using 3 d light, you probably want to be using a linear point light. But if you are in iRay, just go with the point light. Uh, the linear point light has some extra things in there to aid the fall off of the light as it comes away. But the point light, it all, it's all works fine. You don't have to worry about it. If you're in iRay, go with a new point light. If you're in 3 d light, maybe go with a linear point light. But they both work exactly the same. So we will select new point light and we get this little dialog box come up. Uh, we've got three three options, apply default settings, which will place the point light at the 000, zero, zero uh, coordinates in the X, Y, Z axes. We've got apply active transform, uh, active viewport transforms, which will place the point light at the position of our current camera. And we've got copy selected item, which I've got it selected up on plane two here. So it will place the uh, the point light at the position of that plane too. For our purposes, what we're going to do is we're going to do apply active viewport transforms and put the point light at exactly where our camera is. And so we hit accept. Now, if I just come on to a side on view camera here that I have set up, we can see that our point light has been placed into the scene and it's been placed at the position of our camera if I just turn that on briefly. Uh, now, what a point light does, as may be indicated by the way that it's represented in the scene, is a point light sends out a uniform bright light in all directions on the X, Y, Z uh, axes. Uh, and it doesn't really start to fall off until it's at quite a bit of distance from the, the point light itself. A spotlight, uh, if you remember from the previous video on, on these, sends out basically a uniform light towards our, our model in the scene. And then there's a cone which exists where the light begins to fall off as it reaches the edges of that cone. Uh, and that's the principal way where a spotlight and a point light actually differs. Now, if we come across to uh, our main camera again and then just put it into uh, NVIDIA iRay Preview, we can just about make out our character there in the gloom. Uh, necklace is quite bright, but we can just about make the character out in the gloom there. And the reason for that is because we haven't set any of the settings yet for the point light. Uh, so with point light selected, if we come down to our lights tab and then come down to where we can see luminous flux, which determines our brightness, as we can see, it's set at the default 1500. What I tend to do, I just add a zero on, Still a bit gloomy. Add another zero one. Yeah, she's lit up, but not quite how I want her. And then just add another zero one. That should be enough. And you can see she's quite well lit up now. Uh, there's a couple of little things that I'm concerned about, though. The light's a bit too intense. 
uh, or the brightness is fine, but it's a little bit too intense. And as a result, you can just see these really dark shadows in areas where there's shadows. I don't particularly like that. I like to soften the light and soften the shadows somewhat. And how I tend to do that is I come up to light geometry, which you can see up here. Now, at the moment, the default is point, which you would think makes sense, a point light. What that means is that all of these lumens that we've created here are all being grown into our scene from a single point within that point light. Uh, imagine taking your finger and pressing your finger against your forearm. All the pressure that you're applying is being applied on that little small area of where your fingertip is. Uh, if you were to do it with your fist and do the same pressure, it's not as intense because the pressure that you're applying is, is widespread over a, a greater surface area. And it's the same is true with light. So on a point, all of these lumens are coming from a single point of light so that it becomes intense. If I click on that menu and go to rect rectangle, now all the shapes here work exactly the same, but if I go to rectangle, you won't see much difference here because these numbers now come into play. And if I now increase these numbers to increase our surface area, I've done a, th I'll tell you what, I'll go with a thousand, see how it looks. We'll go a thousand by 1000 there. You can see that the, the brightness and the intensity of the light has dropped down because the light is now emanating from a wider, greater surface area. So what we need to do to compensate for that is we need to up our lumens again. We'll put another zero on there. And as you can see, we've now lit our character up, but, those real, but it's not as bright and intense. And those really dark areas in the shadowy areas have all nicely, all nicely softened. Now, you might ask the question, if you can make a point light into a rectangular shaped light of a thousand by a thousand centimeters, uh, and it's firing out 15 million lumens, and you can do the same with a spotlight, just what's the difference between the two? And it's a good question. Now, here on the screen, we can see our rendered image using the aforementioned point light, and it looks okay. I won't grumble with it. Uh, but what if we did the same image with a spotlight in the same position with the same specifications as a rectangle, a thousand by a thousand and 15 million lumens? Well, as you can now see on the screen, the point light is on the left and the spotlight is on the right. There's a difference. Those unique settings that come under spotlight make our image actually come up alive for want of a better word the highlights on the hair and the skin have more life in them and overall i think it's a much better image so you may ask what is the point and why use point lights well i have a little unwritten rule uh, and that goes something like this if i'm only trying to light people i will use spotlights if i'm trying to light places I will use point lights. Now, in the previous example of our model, uh, when she was just stood there in a, what looked at, to be a studio environment, I, I would prefer to use a spotlight in that environment because, as I mentioned, it looked better. In this situation where we take our same model and she's sitting on a, a little step here in a little building, and if we just come out of the perspective view, we can just see uh, just what there is, just a little box building with a, a staircase in the middle. In this situation, I would rather use a point light. Uh, if I just turn that building off for a moment, we can see I've got a point light just there, where you can see just above where she stood, which is or where she sat, which is inside the building. And then I've got another point light out there in front of her, uh, which is way out in front of her, uh, just light giving up a bit of front illumination. Now I would use point lights in this situation when I'm trying to light a space up even if there are going to be people in that space because it gives it's probably a little bit more realistic uh but if yeah if I was just lighting the character herself I would use a spotlight now that front uh point light that I use out here that could have been a spotlight if you wanted to, or you could have added a spotlight into it if you want to try to highlight a few aspects like the hair or, you know, a few of the highlights on the skin. But uh, what the point lights do in this example, if we just have a swap across to NVIDIA iRay, uh, I don't think that's really a bad result that you get just with those two point lights. Uh, 
as I say, you could possibly do it with a, a spotlight. And the reason for that is because, as mentioned earlier, a point light will send out a uniform light into our scene, lighting up a wide area, whereas the spotlight just sends out a focus beam of light for lighting up smaller, air, smaller areas, pretty much as you know we expect a spotlight to, to work as. So therefore, that's the reason for my simple rule. If I'm just lighting up people, like in a studio, for instance, I'll use spotlights. But if I'm lighting up an area or an environment where I have the intention of placing people, then I'll primarily use point lights. Now, I may add spotlights in certain areas of that scene or, you know, whether it's to light up a, a particular area or to bring out the highlights in eyes or hair or skin of a model. But first and foremost, in spaces, in environments, I'll be looking to use a point light over a spotlight. Anyway, that's point lights. Uh, hopefully you've got something out of this uh, this video. A lot of this is subjective. Use what you feel is right. Uh, but you will get different results between the two and a little bit of experimentation will go a long way. So yeah, if you've got something out of this video and you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up uh, down below if that tells YouTube that I'm a bit of a better YouTuber than what I actually am. Uh, also as well, if you've not yet subscribed and you want to catch other tutorials and other videos uh, in Daz 3D, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell down below. That will really help me out and I'll really appreciate that. And finally, if you've got any comments or any questions on point lights, on lighting in general, on Daz 3D in general, or if you just want a little bit of a chat, drop them down below in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.